Spider-Man! Hey guys, welcome to The Know. I'm Ashley Dankins. And I'm Lawrence Sontag. And look at us, we're in Australia. That's an opera house. Just turn your monitor upside down and You're you'll see what it is. You're local. <laughs> it actually looks like. Uh, so we're actually here, it's kind of the future. It's a day ahead of everywhere else. So we can basically guarantee that all of this news is happening soon. Yeah, and because of that, we have to report that all video games are now MOBAs. It's a terrible time to be alive. I want to kill myself. <laughs> I would walk off camera, but I'm tethered to Ashley with our microphone. <laughs> We're done now. We're getting a lot of things done. Um, but we regret to inform you guys that the world's been... Nope, nope, he already did that one. Yep. Uh, we're not the only ones globetrotting this week, though. Hideo Kojima, along with PS4 architect Mark Cerny, is on something of a technology world tour. Yeah, they make and the cutest couple, don't they? They're adorable. It's like, like an arm. You know, you know, you need a good buddy movie every now and again. Uh, Cerny recently joined Twitter and announced this road trip as his very first tweet. His Twitter feed also has shots of him and Kojima checking out some face scanning technology, the performance capture process used on The Last of Us in order 1886, sharing a milkshake with one straw, and calling each other bae. Yeah. Yeah, Nak Tech. Nak yeah. 2 is coming back, starring Hideo Kojima. Hideo Kojima game, produced by Hideo Kojima, written by Hideo Kojima, Nak 2. It's gonna be great. Uh, hopefully they're not looking at anything else that went into the order. What is this? What is that? <laughs> Are you oh. crushing our heads? We're doing, the, <laughs> doing the kids in the hall thing. Uh, so this is the buddy flick uh, you never knew you wanted. Presumably ends with Cerny getting the girl and the pair finding technology for Kojima Productions next game. Which is a little weird, because even productions never really needed breaking tech. Oh, no, I take that back. I yeah, mean, the sun sensor for Boktai, that was cool, I guess. The Boktai sun sensor was fantastic. I don't think it worked that well. It didn't get kids out of the house oh, actually yeah. playing the games in the sun. Yeah, no, if you but play it under the right kind of lamp, you get it anyway. <laughs> it's like trading Pokemon with yourself. It's great. Trusted to gamers to figure out exactly how to cheat the sun. Well, that's what gamers do. Uh, so if you're hoping for that one anytime soon, like a new Kojima game, since he's looking for tech to base it on, it's going to be a long-ass time. So, you know, it's just getting started. They're in the research phase. Maybe two years after that, they'll start even thinking about what kind of game to make. So we'll check on in like 2020. There's a lot of time to make cutscenes. Um, but will it take them as long as it would to, for someone to finish every single Steam game? That's the big question. It, no. God, I hope not. No, it wouldn't. No. It's like watching every... Adam, focus. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like watching every YouTube video. That's stupid. You can't finish them at the rate they're being uploaded. You fall behind something like 400 minutes. No. 400 minutes every minute you try and watch yeah. on YouTube. That's so, way too much. The only winning move is not to play. But someone is not doing that. Uh, one guy he, uh, who's desperately attempting to complete every game on Steam, he's been followed on Reddit since he started this completely impossible mission in 2012 before there were 8 billion games. And a Eurogamer interview with uh, his the Reddit username is Multitasker introduced him to the rest of the internet this week. I want to know his real name. Damn it, I'm not getting data on This is like some kind of giant data force field. That's uh, Sydney for you. You know the opera house is behind you? Yeah. It's opera house. You can't see because it's blown out. Ozzy. Yeah, if, if you focused away from us, you can see that, but then we just turned into ghostly shadows. Yeah, okay. But it's still really cool, guys. Hey, you got some cool out there. Yeah. So Project Finish All Steam Games is coming along as slow as balls, as you might expect. If you want to get technical about it, uh, on his list of 1,400 Steam games, Multitasker has so far completed 283, or around 20%. Since 2012. Yeah, and how does he quantify games you can't finish, like Audio Surf what is, or, or Super Hexagon? What is beating that? All so the achievements? Maybe achievements? Yeah, that, That's be, that seems like the right one, but yeah, hardly a complete like a measure. measure. What about uh, Smite? Yeah. Oof. So, uh, let's see here, he's got a, of course he's still got about 3,500 3, games left to play, and considering that about 55 games get added to Steam each week, his goals are pretty much dead in the water. He's estimated to have spent- we didn't know that already. Yeah, right? I mean, it's foregone, but whatever. He spent $15,000 on Steam games thus far. Don't worry, I'm sure he has a very satisfying life. He's got wife, a lot of kids. Fulfillments and challenges that preclude him from playing every shitty visual novel on Steam. Doesn't know that there's no way he has any of this. Sakura money sink. <laughs> if he's rushing to finish some before the Xbox 360 servers get off, he's got a little bit more time than everyone thought because rumors have been swirling that Microsoft may be cutting off support for the last generation's games around November of this year. Bullshit. They just rolled out backwards compatibility. Why would they do that? Because they just want to force you forward. Trying to get everyone off the 360. It's little, been three years at that point. Um, part of that comes from comments made in 2013 by Microsoft marketing executive Yusuf Mehdi, who said that Microsoft would support the very profitable 360 for, quote, at least three years. So the other part of the story comes from history. Microsoft shut off the original Xbox servers in April of 2010, just about 10 years after the console launched in November 2001. And seeing outside the 360 launch in November 2005, people have been expecting uh, Microsoft to give it the old yellow treatment any day now. 
Uh, fortunately, Phil Spencer addressed the rumors on Twitter saying categorically they are not true. You said that about something else, Phil. I, I, we heard you. Remember that. We've taken pictures of that tweet. Liar. Uh, but if you thought Microsoft wouldn't find new inventive ways to charge people for our stuff, like, I don't know, Minecraft, you'd be wrong. They have. Uh, they've got a surprise. It's Minecraft Education Edition was announced. Uh, yesterday or two days ago if you're not living in the future I guess and it features a licensing models for schools it's based on the already existing mod of Minecraft edu and will give teachers and students access to educational worlds with downloadable lesson plans how much do you think the mod maker gets for this the mod maker the well if it's based off it's of Microsoft the mod. and they're smart none no money zero dollars maybe maybe they took him out to dinner and gave him like a twenty dollar check and he was happy to get it because he's never had he's never had I don't know Hollandaise sauce before. Mod makers are not hard to woo, is what I'm saying. Standards are pretty low. Uh, yeah, use in schools is one of the primary reasons Microsoft cited when they purchased Mojang's game back in 2014. Probably because they saw the school system was as good as place as any to try and make some quick millions. <laughs> All that budget it's got. So this is the weird part. Uh, apparently, the Education Edition license will reportedly cost $5 a student and should start rolling out this summer. That seems astronomically low. Whenever a company licenses a product for schools, typically they do it because they can charge a fuckload of money. You're tapping into state reserves there. Uh, Disney licensed Bill Nye specifically so they could sell it to schools at like $500 a VHS tape. I remember that shit back in the 90s because I wanted to buy it and it wasn't for sale. Maybe they That's why. no one will pay more than $5 for Minecraft these days. That's a good point. Everyone's got Minecraft. Yeah, it's already out in consumers, so the teachers could just be like, fuck this, just give them normal Minecraft. Maybe that's it, it's driving down the price already. Maybe. Uh, that's interesting though. Man, you could get all that sweet tax money. Get in, this, get in the kids' heads early. You own them. But while we're on the subject of education and everything, the canceled NCAA football games are moving back into the spotlight following controversial comments from ESPN personality Kirk Herbstreit. You got that one. I should be on sports ball. Yeah, who was a voice in the series speaking with SEC country? Herbstreit said angrily that the game had better come back and that quote Ed O'Bannon ruined that for all of us. If you'll remember, or you know, at least if you don't hate sports, the NCAA games and all of EA's college sports business was effectively killed off thanks to a lawsuit brought by the NCAA by O'Bannon and other athletes. Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting. It's one of those. You can see it either way kind of things, at least I can. Uh, most of the lawsuit revolves around EA Sports' March Madness games, which O'Bannon claims used his likeness for profit without permission, along with, you know, every other college athlete in the entire game. Ever. So this is kind of the core of the issue, is a should a student get compensated for something they're good at even though they're in a learning environment? Like say a student is really good at chess, but they are in a chess classroom? Should they get paid as though they're a professional competitor? Because typically students don't get paid for that. That's no, they're not allowed to. their career as a pro. Yeah. It's one of the big things about it. Yeah, the idea is that if you're on the cover of a game or you're featured in any kind of way for your, your, your athletic acumen in school, that will just help you launch your career once you graduate. But some people say that, no, they're young professionals and they deserve to be compensated. Well, maybe he should just get a copy of the game. Compensation. That, no? that was the argument, no, yeah. Um, he's totally wrong, by the way. What players really want is hoverboards. Yes, they do. Or at least the Carolina Panthers do, apparently. They got banned for, from using them. At, Why? After they got caught racing them in the hallways of the Bank of America Stadium. College students have done way dumber shit, and they haven't gotten banned from that. No, just hoverboards. I guess because it's combustible. Lots of things are combustible if you ram them into each other hard enough. It's uh, stupid. I just found out you're not even allowed to have those hoverboards on air, like uh, airport property. Stupid! Yeah. Why? Silly. I guess you could probably hide some pretty nasty stuff in one of those things. I, th I think it's also just the battery and the setting on fire. A lot of weird EA stuff happened back in 2013. I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, so back when EA signed its deal with Disney for ex exclusive rights to make Star Wars video games, Lucasfilm registered a slew of very strange URLs including not one, but three sequels to the terrible Naboo Simulator Gungan Frontier. Three of them? Who oh boy? As well as Order 67, Wolfpack Alliance, and Wookiee Hunters. Wookiee? Oh, wow, that's just, okay. I've never uh, even heard of, what is Gungan Frontier? <laughs> is that a real thing? Is Wookiee Hunters gonna be in the bars next to Cabela's Big Game Hunters? Yeah, oh God. It's just one <laughs> grizzled dude with no arms. saying like, I got a Wookiee once. You don't wanna see what I've seen. 
Um, all those URLs probably caused a ton of concern about the direction that the new Star Wars movies and games might take, but Lucasfilm Story Group executive Pablo Hidalgo revealed on Twitter this week that it was actually all just an elaborate trolling meant to hide the registration of Star Wars Rebels. It's pretty fucking smart. It is. Hidalgo followed up with a bunch of hilarious retweets speculating about what these domain registrations might mean for the franchise. So wait, if, if, if it's Wookiee Hunters, are you a Wookiee Hunter or are you hunting Wookiees? I feel like you'd be hunting Wookiees. Oh, that's terrible. No, that's terrible. Wouldn't it, would it just be like... I don't want that. No, that sounds kind of fun. Only a predator could do that. Oh, predator versus Wookiee! Has anyone written that yet? You just have. <laughs> Wait, who do you think would win? A predator probably would win. Uh, I mean, that Wookiee Hunter game sounds pretty cool, but never gonna happen, maybe. And other things that will never happen, and this fucking breaks my heart. Apparently, human beings can never be Spider-Man. Which is to say Bullshit. they couldn't... Bullshit. Yeah, we they... read the comics. We know there's science behind it. The fingers get... The little... I saw the Sam Raimi He's... film. The little thingies pop out. And then you just gripped everything. It's cool. So, it's, yeah, I know this is really shocking, but according to a study published in the science journal PNAS, biologist from the <laughs> University of <laughs> PNAS... It's funny because it's like penis. That's nice. A uh, biologist from the University of Cambridge proved that it's impossible for humans to become spider people who can climb walls. The reason for this is that the larger an animal is, the more sticky surface area they need to effectively climb at an exponential rate. They dedicated science to this. They did studies yeah. and analytics. I appreciate that. Well, I feel like uh, I feel like something similar happened a couple of years ago where they were like, yeah, humans can never fly. Because the heavier you are, the bigger wings you need. So you don't need just like, you can't just scale it up. Even no, though we, he has the we... proportionate strength of the spider, he doesn't have the proportionate stickiness, apparently. Well. Stupid. There's a cum joke in there somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> the first god, now Spider-Man. They come from all one at a time. Thanks, science. Uh, apparently, we'd need about 40% more is what we need Just for our surface sticky. area? Mm-hmm. 40% uh, more sticky surface area on our stupid non-spider human bodies in order to climb the way Spider-Man does, which it would be the equivalent of wearing a size 114 shoe. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so Spider-Man climb, climbs with like the pads of his fingers, but you could just use your palm and then that would be it. And then you'd be fine. It'd be like uh, Mission Impossible 5. Four. So, what, Four. But if you have to have a hand the size of a size 114 shoe, oh. dinner conversations would be awkward. And yeah. there were a lot of other things that would be awkward too. Can you imagine how to every time you go to a Every time you go to a music show and you clap, you just create a shock wave that would knock, the, <laughs> knock just, everyone out of the room. Destroy every band you love. Wait, Hulk already does that. Anyway. Jesus Christ, I'm just coming up with a lot of shit that's already been made today. Since we have um, been so grown up before, let's close out with a dick joke. Oh, the size 114 thing? Like a 114 shoe? Yep. All right, fuck it. That's way too many trains. No more news. Oh, but I like trains. Wait, is that another one? Oh. Constant. Trains took my news? Trains uh, took your news. God damn it. There's a lot, of, a lot of little people walking up there and they keep looking over. But clap with your giant 114 hands if you believe in fairies and trains. Boom! If you clapped with 114 hands, I feel like you would kill a fairy every time you clap. It's like the inverse of It's a Wonderful Life.